Hi, my name is Nigel Griffiths, I work in Power Systems Advanced Energy Support in Europe. In this movie we'll be looking around a shared storage pool, version 3. This is a VAO server feature where we give a handful of LUNs to the cluster of VAO servers and the VAO servers then hand out the disk space to their clients. This means that uh, every time we create a new client we don't have to beg, steal or borrow a new LUN and get all those zones sorted out. They're sorted out once for the VAO servers. So I think my cluster is on this VO server called Gold VOS1, and so we'll start exploring there. The first command to run is cluster list. And we've already learnt that the cluster is called Galaxy. Okay, now we know that, we can go exploring a bit more. We have a cluster status command. Now we can see all the VO servers that are participating. Um, in here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, we can go up to 16, so we can make this cluster bigger if we want to. Now, by the naming convention in here, you can see that this is Diamond VO Server 1 and Diamond VO Server 2. And my naming convention tells me the machine Diamond has two of them. We can actually see the serial number here are the, the same for those two. And the number over here, this is the uh, LPAR ID or the LPAR number, which the HMC, we could work out which LPAR it was that's running the VO server. And we can see here one is uh, this purple three, is actually LPAR five. And we have purple four down here in LPAR two. Okay, we've also got us some status information here. It all looks okay, which is uh, good news. So let's investigate further, just clear the screen. The next command we'd like to use is this list storage pool. Now the previous command was part of the cluster away AIX. Now we're using a shared storage pool command to find more information about the pool. So here we go. The pool in the cluster called Galaxy is Atlantic. So that's the next thing we need to learn before we can carry on. We've got a lot of information here. The pool size is half a terabyte or so. And we can see out of that we've allocated uh, three quarters of a terabyte. So we're actually over allocating here, and it says our over commit size here is one third of a terabyte, roughly speaking. Um, even though we've over allocated our space, we actually still have quarter, you know, half of our pool is unused. So we still have quite a long way, provided all the LPARs that are using the, the pool don't start suddenly using up all their disk space, we'd actually uh, run a bit short. But at the moment we're fine, we've got uh, only half of our pool actually used. Pretty typical of, of my systems as they're all a bit crash and burn and we haven't got a lot of data in databases for example. It tells me there's uh, 23 logical units out there, um, maybe one or two for each of our clients, so there's probably about 15 or 16 LPARs actually using the pool at the moment. We'll look at that in a second. So lots of useful information here. We can see at the risk where we are undersizing our pool if everybody goes for it. and. Um, We've got a summary and we've got the name of the Atlantic. Okay, so using that we can go to the uh, next command. Okay, so cluster name Galaxy Storage Pool Atlantic. For some reason it absolutely insists that we put the minus BD backing device uh, option at the end, but uh, there we go. Well, now here's all our uh, logical units. We saw 23 of them on the previous one, didn't we? So we'll back it up to here. So here we can see that uh, the clients in here, this is my naming convention over here, a virtual disk, the uh, LPAR that's attached to, and I use ABC. Uh, somewhat limited, I can get up to 26 disks, of course, with ABC. Um, now you may have your own naming convention, this will do for me. Um, it doesn't actually make sense if I'm doing a lot of live partition mobility, because uh, naming the machine it's on is a bit silly, because it could be on a different machine in the next 10 minutes. But it's saying that I've allocated uh, 16 gigabytes of space. Um, actually that appears a lot of times, some of them are a little bit bigger and um, some of them are quite a lot bigger here for Diamond 6 for example. Doing a lot of thin provisioning in here and out of the space I've allocated you can see how much of that has actually used. This is quite nice to look down my um, logical partitions and see what's going on. We see one here has um, 70 gigabytes of space or so and it's used 75% of the space. Uh, by looking at the name here, it has an I in it, so this is an IBM I uh, logical unit to, to uh, IBM I uh, logical partition. And, uh, well, they have a lot of stuff, don't they, in the uh, operating system uh, built in as part of the features you get. 
I um, tend to ignore these great big uh, part numbers up in here. Um, in fact, I wish I could get rid of them. One extra thing we can see in here, this is my uh, an LPAR called uh, um, Gold 6. And uh, we can see I've got some snapshots in here, some other snapshots around as well. Um, I'm actually just using uh, a little naming convention here as snap and a number, so I can remember which one's which and which uh, partition it's connected to. I've actually been installing um, some open source software in here, um, so I want to need to install um, Apache 2.4 and PHP then I want to get um, RRD tool installed and then Ganglia and as I go through each of those phases I do a snapshot as it works and uh, snapshot it so that I can then install the next package if something goes wrong I can roll back to my snapshot and, and try it again. I've actually found a problem with installing uh, RRD tool um, it was core dumping so I uh, rolled back and tried it again once we worked it out we can carry on and got uh, Ganglia running. Very nice quick way we can do a roll back to a snapshot in about 60 seconds and um, about 30 seconds of that is just restarting the LPAR um, based on the old set of disk blocks in the snapshot. A really nice way of uh, working and trying things out and quickly recovering. One thing to note in here, you can see snapshot 1, 2 and 3. If I roll back to snapshot 1, or the oldest one, um, then 2 and 3 would disappear. We don't have them hanging about and we can't go to snapshot 1, then to snapshot 3 and then one to snapshot 2 because as, as we roll back it will delete the younger snapshots. OK, I'll clear the screen and we're going to use another command here. Here's the ls cluster command. I think this is again the cluster or ls command. Uh, with a minus C and we get an overview of the cluster again we can see it's called Galaxy in here and these are all the machines the uh, VO servers involved with the cluster you can see a number from uh, 1 to 8 and the IP addresses we're actually using to communicate with them down at the bottom we have HDisk 7, 8, 9, 10 and 6 these are the HDisks as seen from this particular VO server, I'm on um, Gold VO Server 1. But it gives us a, a very quick view of what's going on in our particular cluster and our particular disk, which is quite nice. If we look at the uh, same command with a minus i, we get a whole large set of information. Uh, it's zoomed off the screen. This is with the uh, last L bar down here, purple 3. So there's a, a block of stuff like this for each of the VO servers uh, with loads more information we can see that we're looking at um, with the I the interfaces so we see interface number one this is my uh, ENT2 Ethernet for my uh, C as it happens and lots of information about what's going on including broadcast addresses and some things I don't even know what it's about is a MAC address and all sorts of things in here another way of looking at the cluster is with the D for disks options Again, that's zoomed off the top. The last one we're looking at here is the VO server 1, and there's a, another one of these up here for each of the VO servers. Um, in this case, though, it's it's gone to the Diamond 1 VO server. and says, OK, when you're talking to the disks that are in the pool, what do you call them, what, and what's their state? So here, Diamond VO server 1 thinks it's uh, HDisk 3, 4, 5, 6, and 2. This bottom one here is the repository disk, which uh, we keep nice and small. And these are the uh, the data disks, or the cluster disks, as they're referred to in here. If we go up to the previous machine, you will see that they're called different names. Yeah, this started from 3. In this case, it starts from 5, 6, 7, 8, and 4 for the repository disk. Each of the VO servers can have different numbers of disks before we uh, connected up the shared storage pool LUNs, and so they'll be getting different names. Now, I really like this because this very clearly defines what the HDisk numbers are on all the VO servers. So we can make sure that we don't reuse that HDisk for some other purposes and, and muck up our, our pool. Very nicely, clearly documented at a, a entire cluster level in a simple command. Okay, we've got another option with uh, minus M. Um, not sure what this information is really about. Here we go. It's looking at lots of the nodes. We get a stanza like this 
for each of them. One thing I noted in here, this is Diamond VO Server 1, uh, appears at the top in this output, and it says the, the cluster shorthand ID for the node is 1. And that was, in fact, the first node that we put into the uh, shared storage pool cluster, so that makes sense. And, we, and presumably these numbers tell us the order we added them. I don't think it's terribly important, because all the VO servers, when they're running, are um, equal. Um, they do nominate amongst themselves which of them is in control of the repository disk and does the writing to it, for example. Uh, but that can change as you bring VO servers up and down and add them in and out in the pool. But there's some useful information in here um, as well. Then we've got uh, one final um, option, which is uh, the minus S. This is uh, network statistics, and this is the network statistics uh, for the local cluster in here loads of network uh, performance stats we can see in here that the uh, you know the number of packets a great big tens of millions of packets uh, being flowing around uh, what i particularly like is looking for these uh, transmit errors and things we're all zeros good my network's in a good uh, good state uh, this vo server has been up for six months or so so you expect packets to be uh, flying about we can actually see something called gossip packets um, sent and received up here that's so i guess this is the cluster chatting to itself you know are you there and are we okay are we all still talking to each other uh, sorts of uh, packets but i like the word gossip Okay, that's a quick look around from the VO server end, and um, most of these uh, commands will look exactly the same on the various machines. This one, the network stats, is the, is the local VO server uh, view. And we can also get some information about what our cluster looks like um, from the HMC, so we'll look at that now. And uh, again, we we'll go to this gold VO server one. We can see some things about the, uh, the disks there. So I'm on one of my HMCs, and this is our, our gold machine here. And we have to come out one level back up to um, servers. So we can select gold here. Storage management. And we can query our VO server. Yeah, we can see there's no local disks on this VO server um, because we're moving everything over to the shared storage pools as we think it's really good technology and makes everything live partition mobility ready. If I clicked on that little box at the bottom there we then get the uh, including the shared storage pool data. Here we can actually see um, all those um, logical units and um, who they're connected to um, from the pool as we saw in the command we only actually see the L parts assigned to for the logical units that are assigned on our current uh, VO server this is gold VO server 7 so in here we have a lot of nuns up in here because it doesn't know what the other VO servers are doing with the uh, logical units so we uh, have to be careful there just because it says none it doesn't mean it's available we'd have to go to the other VO server to check what's happening there um, and, but we can see our logical units um, here and we can do um, operations very simply on the VO server and we can make a make blocking device command to add a disk to a VO server um, in this case we can do it a lot more simply and we can just ask it to create give it a, a name the disk gold 6e this is our uh, pool, give it a, a size, I know, 16 gigabytes, we can assign it to an LPAR 6 and we can then say well do that thick provisioning for us and we can click OK. That will go off and run the command for us and now it's querying the VO service, it's already done. If we went to the gold 6 logical partition, it's AIX, so we run the config manager, it will just find the new disk. So I have seen it, if you do it very quickly, um, it doesn't find the disk. Uh, give it two seconds and it will find it there. So here we have the, the new disk assigned to the Gold 6 partition. Really that quick allocating space. None of this um, going to the storage team begging for some more disk space, um, you know, having a meeting with them, discussing what you're going to do with it, and or when you'd like it and you want it now, um, and then you have to wait even longer for them to zone it up before you can actually find the disk online. Let's do all this in the next 10 seconds, not the next 10 hours or 10 days. 
I'll just leave you with a list of the commands we used in case you want to make a note of them. The next movie is about live partition mobility with SSP3.